Alright, starting off the recording with a ranger guild, and we're going to prove that request that will be pretty good. We'll be able to get some hunters up. I'm not sure if it actually trains up in large dwarfs guild though, but you know what, it's uh, an interesting guild hall to have, so we'll get that dug out. Um, all I'm doing right now is I'm designating some areas to dig. Also, as soon as I unpause, that human caravan came by. Um, and yeah, probably not going to have that many... Um, we're probably going to have a lot more skips forward, but that's because I want to get a lot of the busy work done in this episode, so we can focus on doing fun things like uh, massacring goblins. Uh, by the way, I am not attacking any settlements right now, I'm taking a break from that, just so we can get some of the stuff done here, around here. So yeah, we'll get that all done, and I'll come back to you when it's finished. Fuck. My apologies, but we're still unloading. We'll be ready soon. Alrighty then, we're ready to trade now, and we're about to do that chat move of just purchasing literally everything. So, uh, yeah, we'll balance out the profit. We do have enough stuff to purchase everything, and, uh, we'll get that done. Well, that was pretty simple. Um, just deselected all the purple stuff, balanced it out perfectly, only, they only had 3,000 profit. Just drop in the bucket, and now we have all their stuff. The only crap they have is our gold, which I, I honestly think is a pretty fair deal. Uh, I have no idea what we actually just purchased either. Um, oh, a grizzly bear, okay, that's pretty cool. Elephant! Okay, elephants, by the way, are the best war ammo you can get, so if you can get another one of those elephants, get them to breed, it will be amazing. Next. Uh, next up, we do have the grizzly bear, which is pretty nice. And these guys will never have any, any giant animals. You can get those from the elves. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, just get these guys all in their respective pastures, and we'll be done. The black bears, um, they can't really be uh, war trained, but they are kind of fun pets. All right, just to send the rest of the grazing animals to the pet up by the tavern, but I'm gonna put the elephant down here with the uh, big dogs and whatnot. Um, eventually we will build its own pasture. Probably play with the grizzly bear as well. I'm probably gonna make a whole warrior on this pasture by itself. So yeah, we'll get that going. Matter of fact, I same up to make that pasture right here. And the reason why I'm making there is of course because of the clay. Grass can grow on that clay and uh, grazing animals need grass in order to survive. So yeah, not exactly a problem for non-grazing animals, which most dwarves are, or animals in dwarf butchers are, but if they do need grass, they do need to be in a pasture where there is grass. Alright, some more dwarves have been arriving in report. Let's see who comes by, eh? Uh, first off, we got that gem cutter. Let's just see how we got what looks to be a peasant, a doctor, um, another peasant, uh, what is that guy? Pump operator, okay, that's like an engineer, kind of. Um, let's see here, some animals, nothing that unexpected, more dwarves, uh, that's a peasant. Let's see here, anyone else coming by? Could be the last of them, 130, that's a good population, I mean, you get up to 140 for a, uh, um, to become a, uh, geez, uh, what was it? A metropolis. But yeah, I think that's about like five, just a few. And, uh, I don't know, always good to see newcomers. The doctors are kind of interesting too. But, uh, yeah, minor thing. The ground rumbles, the people tremble. The giant tickball, spishababon, Takru has come. A gigantic creature resembling a human. Almost unparalleled in size. Well, as we can see here, the giants up here, the uh, masons are down here. Um, there's a lot of people down there. I don't think we can risk trying to trap this being. And also, giants aren't too useful. It's not like it's a titan or a bronze glasses or something like that. They also happen to be kind of weak. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send all the squads out except for the noble prisoners because that's the vampire and he's trapped. And we are going to attack this guy. Um, okay, attack this person right here. Um, alrighty then, let's see how that pans out. 
All right, look in here. We can see our lone hammer lord, this guy right here. Um, and let's see him. He's challenging the giant right away. What is that? Goblin bone scepter. That must have come off the uh, the giant. Um, I'm sure why he's the only one. Must have just been out here ready to fight. Oh, as you can see, um, giant's gotten a little bit red. He's been injured. We can see another hammer lord coming up on him. I kind of want to see how this, uh, oh, and he killed it. So let's look at what happened here. Um, let's see, just a bunch of bruising, bashing. Yeah, a lot of that. Um, let's see, jamming left lung. Okay. Mm hmm. Bruising, bruising. I'm looking to see. Was that. I'm trying to see if he loses hold of that, uh, bone scepter. Hmm. Maybe it actually came off the herb list. Um, did he lose hold of that by some somehow? Uh, let's see here. Hmm, I can't tell. Not sure where that bone scepter came from. But uh, anyway, the threat of the giant is now passed. The beast is dead, and we can continue on with our projects. Well, this is unusual. I didn't know this could happen. Um, hmm, doesn't say about anything about this on the wiki, but uh, apparently we can now have a new baron. Uh, Lika Trelik practices being the rightful heir has inherited the position of baron of Abbey Rulers. Wait, this is not for our fort, this is for a separate offsite fort belonging to our civilization. If we go Technically, I think that guy should be a count, but doesn't matter. We have our Baron back. Um, what to do about this? So, uh, what we can do is we can uh, put the Mayor Mayor back to the Vampire because the Baron can do the um, uh, positions of the Mayor, like accepting new citizens and whatnot, and we can put the Baron back to the uh, uh, we can put the Baron here. Let's see, where is the Baron? This guy. Yeah, this is really exciting. Um, I mean, most people don't like having nobles around, but yeah. But I find it doesn't matter. I think what we'll do is I'm not going to dig out my old tomb. This is, that would just be sacrilegious. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make another tomb. And what we can do is we get E for each Baron. We can just keep on extending it back. Kind of like a little history to it, right? Uh, but yeah, that's that's great. Um, glad to have our Baron back. Seems we have another Death Slayer. I've just uh, sent them to the Justice, and we'll investigate them. Seems like this pump stack is finally finished. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, dig out the next layer for it, and then we'll get that built up. I do still need to place the doors on those, but that can come later. We're going to dig out this section for it. And um, this whole section goes all the way up, so we shouldn't have to do another zigzag section like that. So yeah, we'll be able to build this place all the way up. Nice. Alright, it seems we're able to bring this pump stack all the way up here without any issues, without running into anything, which is amazing. So uh, yeah. We'll get to work designating the section out, and uh, the dwarves will get to work digging it out. Alrighty then, after a good deal of designating, I finally got this done. Now since this is a zigzag pattern, I can't exactly just draw out a box and place it. I have to do all that crap manually. Now I'm sure there's some kind of like copy and paste program I can get on this thing to make it go about 50 times faster. But I am unaware and oblivious to it, so if anyone can help me out with that, that would be great. I hate having to designate these areas. However, um, that is the path now. This is all done, and I am very glad it is done. Do not see any problems in it. It's zigzagging perfectly. And uh, by the end of this, we should have a perfectly operating screw pump all the way up here. Now, of course, uh, Areas on this screw pump are going to be tapped off, but uh, we'll get to that point when we get to it.
Alright, doing a quick designation here. Seems like we're going to need 97 uh, screw pump parts to make this. And uh, so yeah, I'll get that smelted right away. Um, obviously other projects going on and those are going fine. Alrighty then, so I'm um, coming towards the end of the episode here. I do realize this was a shorter, shorter episode, but I do promise I get a bunch of stuff done. Uh, just this pen here has been dug out. I'm not going to put the elephants in there immediately. Um, I just want grass to grow there first. Uh, we've also gotten a bit more dogs. Of course, we've gotten a uh, water pump dug up. Uh, the temple up here is going pretty nicely. Uh, but the big thing is we've got this place going, all dug out. Now we just need the remedies, which uh, are almost done at two. So by the next episode, we should have this all built out. And um, we'll really be able to focus on the water tower, just um, moving the water to places. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm planning on building a giant water reservoir on the top of the mountain. And uh, I'm going to use that to make... Well, to obviously fill up certain areas like this area right here, but also um, I'm using it for the trap hall to pressurize water and then just discharge it. That should be pretty effective against invaders. And uh, yeah, that's all the plans we've got for now. So I'll see you in the next episode. Um, if you want a dwarf named after me, remember to either comment the name below or ping me on Discord. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Bye.